The new wave of makeup, natural, dewy, fresh, colorful, iridescent, funky, but casual. Or like some would say, the new wave of makeup, Ooh. catchy, Ooh. unpigmented. Yes, girl, go ahead and give us nothing. Ooh. And that point of view is very valid. When brands like Glossier first came out, they were definitely misunderstood by some. I feel like you either love the natural wave of makeup or it's not your thing. And whichever one it is, it's fine. I think as long as you find products that make you feel comfortable and work for you, then that's the key. Gen Z has definitely embraced that style of no makeup makeup, a light base with imperfections speaking through, but also having fun by wearing colorful shadows and glitters. For example, I think Euphoria was such a cultural reset for the makeup world and it made it okay for people to just have fun and experiment with whatever they like. With the increasing demand of no makeup makeup, numerous brands have conquered the market and and today, I'm reviewing one of them, Morphe 2. Can I just say that Morphe 2 is such a lame name? I kind of get it because I guess they still wanted to get associated with their brand. But okay, let's take Tarte for example, who owns Sugar Rush, which is their second brand for a younger demographic. I feel like they've done a really good job at associating themselves with their parent company, but they still remain their own at the same time. So Morphe 2 was launched in collaboration with Charlie and Dixie D'Amelio and for those of you old slugs that may not know who they are <laughs> maybe maybe I shouldn't be mean to people who don't know who they are um considering that's probably like most of my audience like I always forget that I am abnormal for keeping up with uh, TikTok drama at 23 and I should probably get a life whatever these kids keep me young so anyway, Charlie is the most followed person on TikTok and she's amassed over 78 million followers in less than a year. And when you're watching this, she will most likely have hit a new milestone. And Dixie is her sister and she has ventured into acting and music and her hit song, Sometimes I Don't Wanna Be Happy, is actually doing really good. So um, congrats on the collab. Good for them. I'm so happy for them. They're actually really cool and down to earth. So yes we stand but yes i believe they are the faces of the brands so they didn't take part into like the creation process they're just the spokesperson for morphe 2 which is so smart on their part for the marketing because I don't believe it would have reached as many people without their clout attached to the project. Okay, without any further ado, let's get into it. So I got one piece of everything and I placed my order through Sephora. If you are Canadian, they do sell Morphe on Sephora. It shipped within five days, which is crazy fast. And I've been wearing this makeup for the past week, so I know how it wears throughout the day and I know how it looks in natural light and after sweating in the sun for hours. Oh, I also I also want to mention that I am a natural makeup lover through and through. I want to go into this review as myself, a full grown woman who loves natural makeup but also kind of as my 15 year old self like back in high school when I just got into makeup and I was afraid of what people would uh, think about me. I think it's important to make the difference because this line was created for teens and teens have different needs but most of all teens are broke and i mean i'm still broke but like not that high school broke broke you know like when you have 250 in your pockets for like cookies and uh, you have to beg your parents constantly for cash yeah i would not go back to that broke nah -uh, thank you so um now that we've gotten the technicalities out of the way let's get into it so this collection includes a skin tint cream blushes a clear highlight some jelly eyeshadows some lip glosses which they call lip oils but they're really just lip glosses so the first item is called the hint hint skin tint and it comes in 20 shades total it's 23 dollars which is more expensive than your average drugstore foundation so already if i were in high school i know i would skip on this and just stick to concealer let's talk about the shade range it's not bad but it's not good either i think there's a whole 
whole row of deep dark shades missing. I know it doesn't bother some people to have a smaller selection of shades when it's a BB cream, tinted moisturizer, or something of the sort, but my issue is they claim that it can be built up to a medium coverage foundation, and you would never carry 20 shades for a medium coverage foundation. You can pause to read the full claims, but the most important ones to me are the buildable, buildable, buildable sheer to medium coverage and lets your skin shine through so you can pretty much apply it however you want with a sponge your brush or your fingers but i'm going to follow all the three ways they suggest to wear it before starting off i want to mention that i have dry skin and i typically never wear primers i prime my face with moisturizer and sunscreen always All right, so don't forget to shake it off. Okay, we're gonna be starting off with the super sheer way. So basically you're just going to mix your moisturizer with one or two drops of the skin tint and you're going to create your own tinted moisturizer. This is not my favorite way, to be honest. Uh, it's giving me nothing, so no thank you. Moving on to the sheer way, you're going to apply a few drops with your fingers and blend. This is also not my favorite way to do things. I'm not a finger person when it comes to my base. It's messy, it's shearing out the coverage too much for my liking, and yeah. But I will say however, you can definitely build up uh, the coverage in the spots that you need with your fingers and it works wonderfully, but it's just not for me. And lastly, the medium way is to apply it with a brush. I'm using this uh, way too old brush that I own since I was uh, 17. Okay, I tried <laughs> I tried to apply the skin tint by like not not touching like the dropper on my face because I know that Hiram would be proud of me, but <laughs> it wasn't working, okay? I am blind and it just it, it wasn't working, so I'm very very sorry, but yes, the dropper touched my face, although it's not good. Do things at your own risks, okay? It also uh, takes quite a while to blend out the strokes completely, but listen, if you want to get the most coverage out of this skin tint, this is the way to go. The brush, I mean, wow, crazy. My personal favorite way is with the beauty blender and yeah, you get like a nice amount of coverage, but you get just like more skin peeking through. This is my happy amount of coverage and I wanted to have an even base so I added a drop to like build it up just so it looks even. But like typically I would only use the beauty blender because it just, it looks nice, yeah. This is what my skin looks like up close and the finish is lovely, honestly and my skin tone feels more even and it's just the perfect amount of skin texture showing. And I think the shade match is also uh, not too bad. Okay, so here are my final thoughts on the Hint Hint Skin Tint. This is a very lovely product. Expensive in my opinion for a high school student. Like I said, if you are in high school and you don't have the money, I'd stick to just spot treating with a high coverage concealer like the e.l.f. camo concealer. But as myself now, I would absolutely get it. The coverage and finish finish the finish is lovely and i personally don't set it and it wears nicely throughout the day it survived a full day in the sun and it looked more dewy by the end of the day which i love overall i would get it if you need a base product and you can spare the money but otherwise you're not missing out on that much 
I will say though, this is my second favorite thing from this line, so I really like it. Next is the Wonder Tint Cheek and Lip Mousse for $16. And this is not cheap either. It comes in four shades and I picked the shade Amaze, which is the berry shade. Here are the claims. You can pause if you want to read them. Once again, buildable is the most important one to me and I wanted to blend nicely. They claim it's a mousse formula, but it feels more like the e.l.f. buddy primer than a mousse in my opinion. So first I'm going in with my fingers and this is the moment I realized that I forgot to conceal. So I'm just going in with a bit of Glossier Stretch Concealer, which is my favorite, and I set it with some Charlotte Tilbury Pressed Powder. Here's what it looks like blended out with my fingers, and I really wish I added more blush actually. It also blends really nicely with a brush, and it works really great with a beauty blender too. This is a great cream blush. It blends beautifully and the color payoff is great. But once again, I just find it a bit overpriced for some makeup marketed to teens. I think a ColourPop blush is around $8 and you really can't go wrong with that. But as myself now, I would absolutely get it. It's very lovely and I can't get enough of cream blushes. Okay, so they don't have a bronzer. So I'm just going in with this one from Wet n Wild. Okay, next is the Gloss Pop Face and Eye Gloss, which is the thing I was the most excited about. I love a golden highlight and sometimes even a highlight with specks of glitter, but sometimes I just want to look oily, dewy, like a glazed donut. And this is it to achieve that glass skin finish. This is $16, which I also find expensive. However, this is a very pretty unique formula and I haven't seen that many brands that are accessible create something like this and I have certainly never seen it at the drugstore either. They say it's sticky and it offers a fresh dewy look. So this tube is actually quite generous and you really don't need much to work with. I use way too much here. So I use my fingers, but I saw Charlie use a brush to blend it out. So whatever works for you, the beauty blender also works really well. I wanted to see what it would look like on my eyes and this feels very bland. So I'm excited to try it out with actually like a nice eye makeup. Okay, one thing I will say is you can feel this stuff on your skin and on your eyes. It feels very heavy at first, but the feeling will go away. It's kind of like the first time I wore foundation and I could feel it and I just wanted to take it off. But the shine it provides is just insane. So they say it's never sticky, but you can still feel the tackiness. So I wouldn't say that's completely true. This will make you look like a glazed donut. So if you're into that, like get it. It's so nice. I was on a ride the other day with the windows down and even with the wind, my hair didn't get caught on my face and the shine fades beautifully. It's surprising like very strong even at the end of the day overall yes save your coin for this i like it a lot this is my favorite thing for sure the jelly eye shimmers this is 14 dollars for a single eyeshadow once again it's overpriced in my opinion i can't judge all the shades because i only got one and the one i got is the blue one called starry sky i got sold when i saw it on dixie it looks so pretty wow 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 love the blue so these guys claim that it gives Gives a little shimmer with one swipe and they are buildable first of all the texture does not feel like jelly it feels like thick hard jello they say one swipe and one little shimmer no ma'am. I can't even fake this. Like, I hate this stuff. I feel like this is false advertising because look at Dixie, now look at me. Look at Dixie, now look at me. Look at Dixie, now look at me. Do you see this? My issue is they claim it's buildable when it's not. But don't tell me you can do more than a little shimmer when you can't. Even with the brush. It 
it's not ugly, don't get me wrong. It's super cute, but it's not what I envisioned, and it's not what they sold me, and it's not cute for $15. $14. You know how many McDonald's iced coffee I can get for $14? I can get 14 McDonald's iced coffee. And yes, they will be providing more serotonin than this eyeshadow. It's the lack of pigment for me. It's the chunkiness for me. It's the false advertising for me. It's the letdown for me. This is a classic case of what 2020 was supposed to look like versus how it actually went. I will be demanding a refund. I wanted to try the cheek and lip mousse on my lips and it gives a very nice blotted look. I really don't hate it, but then I took it off to try the lip gloss. Finally, we made it to the end and if you're still here, thank you so much. So we got the classified lip oils for $12 and that's also overpriced for a gloss and you'll see they're actually quite small. It comes in six shades, but from what I've seen from a couple reviews, they actually all end up looking clear on the lips so the shade doesn't really matter this is a clear ripoff from lancome but in the early 2000s every other brand had a clear lip gloss in a squeezy tube and now they are making a comeback and i'm so happy about it as you can see here's a size comparison to my bomb.com it's skinnier and we don't body shame here but just keep in mind it's probably smaller than what you think the size is my shade is extra glaze and it is just it's just so pretty like look at it this provides like some extra beautiful shine it feels moisturizing it's not quite like an oil but i'd say it's like a liquefied gloss this is also like a favorite of mine from this collection glossy clear lip gloss is my ride or die but this is like better and cheaper so yes i highly recommend you can never go wrong with a clear gloss and you can never have too many of them okay so that is what concludes this review of morphe 2 i hope it was helpful and this is the final look very fresh face dewy natural love it this is giving me some school picture vibes i don't know why anyway if you have some questions leave them down below and i will answer you and i will see you in the next one thanks for watching no.